Welcome to today's broadcast. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. What is righteousness? Today we are going to discuss about the word righteousness. Because this righteousness is something that many people are misunderstanding. Righteousness and holiness, are they the same? Definitely no. Can a man grow in righteousness? The answer is no. Then what is righteousness? Because I see a lot of people, they want to be righteous before God. They are trying all their best. They want to, they, they are trying all their best to be righteous before God. And a lot of them, they decided not to do some things. They say, oh, if I do this one, I'm no longer righteous. I want to tell you today what Bible say about righteousness. Stop being in bondage. The Lord did not put you in bondage. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can be receiving all my updates if you have not done so. God bless you. The Bible makes us to understand that Jesus died on the cross and redeemed us back to God. Jesus died on the cross and redeemed us back to God. And that is the righteousness that the Bible is talking about. The Bible makes us to understand that the righteousness of a man before God is like a filthy rag. In Old Testament, all the things people were doing to please God, all the things they are doing in order to please God, the Bible called those things filthy rag. Because a man cannot be righteous before God without the blood of Jesus being shed on the cross. All the things people are doing, afflicting their souls in one way or the other, the Bible said that the righteousness of a man before God is a filthy rag. So Jesus came and died on the cross. According to the word of God, the Bible said that without shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. And the blood of Christ had to be shed on the cross. And that's why Jesus came into the world and died on the cross. And the Lord redeemed us back. Jesus redeemed us back to God. We are now righteous before God. Righteousness means right standing. That is somebody being qualified to stand before God. Righteousness, that is the right standing that we can now appear before God. We can call God Father. We can pray to God. That is the right standing. We are qualified to stand before God. That is righteousness. And a man cannot grow in righteousness. A man cannot grow in righteousness. And what is holiness? Holiness is when that individual that is now right standing with God begins to live a holy life, doing those things the Bible says he should do, avoiding those things God says he says he should not do. He tried to live a righteous life, life free from sin, life free from guilt. That is holiness. And a man can grow in holiness. A man can grow in holiness. God expects us to be holy. And God expects us to grow in holiness. So man can grow in holiness, but man cannot grow in righteousness. And that area of holiness, we we'll have to talk about it today. Because I see some people that said, oh, I will not plait my hair. If I plait hair, if I put weave on, that is a sin against God. Some people are on the pulpit preaching it, that the Lord told them. Some people are on the pulpit preaching it and say, oh, don't put weave on. Oh, don't put necklace. Don't wear necklace. Don't wear, don't wear this and that oh don't wear any cloth that have iron or gold oh don't wear golden shame don't wear golden wristwatch don't wear any wristwatch at all iron is an idol don't wear this is an idol don't wear that is an idol because they want to live a holy life they thought that they are pleasing god they don't want to offend god but these people are serving god ignorantly they are now violating what the bible said they are calling what god did not call sin sin they tag everything sin and that is why we have to talk about this thing today god did not put you in bondage god did not put you in bondage they say oh you don't supposed to wear ring remove that ring you don't supposed to wear a necklace remove the necklace you don't supposed to wear a bangle you don't supposed to wear any necklace any chain oh you don't but I want to tell you something. Do you know, according to the word of God in Old Testament, when we want to avoid all these things, that is being under the law. Do you know that Bible said, you cannot plant two types of crop together. That is to say, you cannot plant yam and corn together in one place. 
in that Old Testament. And the Bible said that when you plant corn and the yam together, you have sinned against God. You are not permitted to eat that kind of thing. But today, you, you, you discover that some people say, oh, don't wear necklace, oh, don't wear jewelry, jewelry. oh, don't put with one. It's a sin before God. It's a sin. You are planting, but you are planting yam and the cocoa yam together. You are planting yam and corn together and still eat those things. You plant, uh, you plant vegetable in a place you planted corn and you still harvest all of them and eat. You have committed sin. If that is what you want to avoid, you have committed sin already. You enter a restaurant and eat. You don't know the kind of the place they brought those things you ate. You have committed sin because you, you want to dwell in Old Testament. You want to dwell in, in the days of law. You don't want to accept the grace Jesus gave to you. You don't want to accept the grace Jesus brought to you. And the, if you want to keep the law, it's good, no, no problem. But Bible said that he that violated one single law have committed the whole sin that is guilty of all other laws. That is to say, you keep one, one law and you violate the other. Jesus said you have committed sin, you have committed, you have violated the whole law you try to keep. Even those ones you did not violate. As long as you violate one single law, you have you are guilty of all. Those things are not what God is counting on. That is why Jesus did not preach that kind of message. Jesus did not preach, do not wear this one. Jesus did not preach, do not put on this one. Sometimes they said in the book of uh, uh, Peter, where we are reading it, they said, do not plate your hair, do not do this one. We did not understand it very well. Because if you read that book of Peter, you understand that Peter was telling women in those days and said that the beauty of a woman is not on her apparel. The beauty of a woman is not on her makeup. The beauty of a woman is not on her golden necklace or ring, but the beauty inside. So Peter was telling women, the children of God in those days, to understand that there is a physical beauty. But the beauty that the Lord considers is the spiritual beauty. And Peter called it the inward man, the inward man. That is the beauty in the presence of God. That is the spiritual beauty, the condition of your spirit man before God. So Paul began to tell people to not pay all your attention in putting fingernails, in wearing jewelries, in wearing golds, in putting hair, in making yourself look beautiful physically. He tried to remind them and tried to draw their attention. There is other beauty which the Lord desire because the outward beauty, our clothes, we iron our clothes, we wear good clothes, we spray perf, we put we put every fragrance on our body, we look nice and look well, rub nice cream. That is out, outward beauty. Man is the one that sees that one. But God is after the inward beauty. That is the spirit of a man. That is why Paul was drawing the attention of the church so that they will pay attention in that area. But Paul did not condemn the outward beauty. Paul did not condemn the outward beauty. I was struggling. I came and out the other preacher the other day. And he was trying to preach. He was trying to do some things. I look at what he was trying to do. I loved him. I called him. I said, brother, this is not what scripture said. Look at what scripture said. But being that the church here is going for a long time, they have, they have convinced him beyond measure. They say, oh, this one is sin. The other one is not sin. But when we go to Bible, those things are not sin. I think that time has come that when we return back to the written word of God, not all these jargons, not all these things, somebody will just dream and come back and say, the Lord told her, the Lord told him, and everybody agreed. Somebody will just go to bed and wake up and say, the Lord told her, everybody agreed. Time has come that we all will learn the word of God and every one of us will study scripture and we will know the truth of the scripture. So what am I saying? Stop being in bondage. Righteousness as long as you are born again, you are righteous before God. You cannot be more righteous. You cannot be more righteous. The Lord bless you. Don't forget to drop your questions. I'm expecting you, your comments and your questions. God bless you.